Welcome to Introduction to Project Management, Managing Project Scope. This is Lecture A. The objectives for managing project scope are to analyze scope to develop the project scope statement, elicit stakeholder requirements for the project, create a work breakdown structure, WBS. The first objective is to analyze scope to develop the project scope statement, we will look at methods to do that, how to analyze scope and come up with the scope statement. Next, we will talk about eliciting stakeholder requirements for the project and then look at the close tie between scope and requirements. We will also create a work breakdown structure. In other words, this unit talked about two actual products that will be supportive of your work in project management, the project scope statement and the work breakdown structure. When we talk about objectives in terms of requirements, we use the term elicit, and it might be somewhat unusual, but that's the term that's widely used in the process of determining requirements. You may hear discussions of collecting or gathering requirements, but really it's a process where you can't simply go around and pick up requirements as you would pieces of paper. Requirements often need to be drawn out from stakeholders to understand what they really want from your project. This is more of an elicitation process than gathering or collecting. Stakeholders often don't know what they want from a system, so as a project manager, you have to help them define for themselves what the system is going to do. Teasing out these requirements is a highly interactive process, but necessary in order to plan the work and estimate the resources effectively. We will focus on the first two objectives in Lecture A. This unit deals with managing project scope. This brief overview relates to the efforts of a project manager to first define the project scope and then keep track of it throughout the project. Project scope, in general, is really the work to be done on the project. It's important to keep in mind that we want to describe not only what is included in the project, but also what is not included in the project. We are essentially trying to draw a boundary around the project and clarify what's inside and what's outside your project scope. It may be somewhat surprising that there is an entire unit dedicated to project scope, but that will also suggest to you how important it is. Projects are unique, so there is no blueprint for what is to be accomplished by any project. The uniqueness of a project means you really need to define the particular project scope for your individual project. You want to define it as precisely as possible at the start of the project so you can specify the resources you need to do the work and how much time and effort will be required. Once it is defined, the project scope is susceptible to being modified during the project. As you go through your project, you'll learn more about what's required, so it's quite natural to have some changes in requirements throughout the life of the project. However, any expansion of work, called scope creep, is very important to manage because it can be very destructive and can put the success of the project at risk. Added work in scope creep hasn't been planned and the resources haven't been set aside to do it. As a project manager, you'll want to make sure that no work is added to your project unless it has been explicitly considered what the impact will be on all the resources and staffing and any other activities that might be affected. This will be covered later in the unit. Requirements help to make the abstract project concrete. That in turn links to more requirements. Clinical people often have wonderful ideas and will come up with those throughout your project life cycle. It is important to understand and to control these ideas and additions to the project to keep scope creep from getting out of hand. You will learn the effective definition and ongoing management of scope and how critical it is to the eventual success of the project. We focus a lot on techniques for defining and managing scope and will emphasize the importance of eliciting requirements from stakeholders. We mentioned these two key deliverables and how to prepare them, the project scope statement and the work breakdown structure, and we want to emphasize the tight relationship that exists between project scope and requirements. There is a clear distinction between the extensive work needed at the start of the project to first establish requirements and define the scope 
and the continuing effort of you and your team throughout the rest of the project to manage the scope and the requirements. Part of this management is ensuring that scope creep does not occur and that you have effective and explicit methods for handling requests for considering extensions of scope and changes to the requirements. It's very important that you appreciate all of these points and the importance of them going forward in terms of managing scope of your project. How does managing project scope fit with project management? Defining the scope of the work as clearly as possible in the early part of the project is essential. It is going to determine your ability to define the project and estimate resources. It determines the budget, schedule, time, and staffing that you will need to have on the project. Defining the work and defining the scope are foundational activities in building your project team. Make sure you have the talents and skills on your project team that you really need based on the project requirements. In an HIT project, clinicians often have wonderful ideas about how to make the project better. But are they in the original scope of the project, or are they just add-on pieces that will add more work to the project but not make it better? Each of these ideas will have to be analyzed, defined, and either accepted into the project with a scope change statement or rejected. Why is it important to manage scope? A lot of experience with project management exists across a lot of domains, including health IT projects, and experience tells us that failing to manage scope is a leading cause of project failure. Remember, scope creep can go on without notice, so it's very important to identify it and manage it effectively. It's easy to understand that scope creep can occur, but sticking to the project scope statement is really not as easy as it sounds. One of the challenges for you as a project manager is to hold firm to the defined scope and consider changes only as part of a well-defined process. It can be very tricky and require your skills and judgment as a project manager. It can be tempting to just go along with customers who want changes on the project. The smart thing for you to do is to define a process at the beginning of the project for dealing with change requests. You may want to look at your organization and see if such a process already exists. You can still be a team player dedicated to the success of the project and also be firm and help educate your customers as needed so they understand that it's foolish for all parties, including customers, if you uncritically accept all kinds of requests for changes in scope. It's a challenge to manage scope effectively during your project. One of the key reasons is that projects are unique, so there is no exact precedent for you to apply a set list of things that have been done in the past for this project. Also, different stakeholders often have different perceptions of all the important things related to scope, such as how the work will be done, what the project is going to accomplish, how the project will affect them, and what are the deliverables from the project. On the surface, there might be nodding heads and general agreement about the project and what it is going to accomplish, but once you get a little deeper, you may find that stakeholders have very different impressions about what is really intended to be accomplished. The reason for calling attention to the diversity of stakeholders on a project is to highlight that they often have their own perspectives on what project success means. They have their own requirements and definitions of project scope. To be successful as a project manager, you'll want to really tease out all the wants and needs at the start of the project and make them visible. Being aware of them can be instrumental in ensuring a successful project. The challenge of managing scope can be subtle, but it's very important and needs to be recognized as a significant challenge. You will always need to have the original scope statement and statement of requirements on hand to reinforce the current parameters and consider changes only in an explicit way. For stakeholders who come to the project late, it is important to discuss with them what has already happened in the project, what your scope statement is, and how their request for changes will change the project. It could increase the budget, the time, and possibly even the project itself into something totally different than what was outlined in your scope statement. How do we go about defining scope? There are two techniques for doing that. 
The first of these is to take advantage of existing assets. Although projects are unique, this doesn't mean that there still aren't useful assets that you can draw upon to help you define scope on your unique project. Two specific documents, the Project Charter and Stakeholder Register, can certainly help. If you have been following the project management guidelines so far, you will have a project charter to work from when it comes time to define project scope. Remember, a key part of the project charter is the summary of the work to be done. The project charter also includes the business need for the project. These will be helpful in coming up with the project scope statement. Another document that you have to work from is the stakeholder register. Recall the stakeholder register includes a list of the stakeholders, key information about them and their influence on the project, and their role on the project. Another source of assets is your organization, which may have examples of scope statements from prior projects. Your organization may have policies and guidelines that will guide you in preparing your scope statement. Historical information and lessons learned from previous projects can inform your work. It is also common for an organization to have IT methodologies that have been established. These may have been developed because of the organizational activity related to maturity models for system development projects. Being fully aware and up-to-date on standards such as ICD-10 and HL-7 and guidelines such as meaningful use can also help define your scope on a systems project. Be sure to check with your healthcare organization through your project champion or higher level management. All of these organizational assets can be helpful to you as you come up with a way to define scope for your project. A second major technique for defining scope is to engage your stakeholders, and this has a twin benefit. The explicit benefit is in finding out what stakeholders want, what is their interest in the project and the products from it. But a second benefit is a psychological one of engaging them in the success of the project, getting their buy-in for what you are doing. So talk to the whole range of stakeholders. They could be sponsors, customers, users, functional managers, representatives from partner organizations, vendors, consultants, and so on. Talk to them about system boundaries, figuring out what they consider to be part of the system to be built, or services or processes to be developed, and what are the services, products, or systems that are outside of the system that you are building. Have stakeholders help you understand the system boundaries. Use diagrams whenever possible. It can be very difficult and often ambiguous to deal with everything in text, so the graphical diagrams can clarify what's inside and what's outside your system, and what's inside and what's outside the work being done on your project. Clearly define the interactions with other systems and other entities. Learn more about the requirements by talking to the stakeholders. Recall that you have the stakeholder register to work from, and on that list is contact and relevant information about the stakeholders. This can be a starting point for you to engage them in terms of questions. Their answers may help you figure out what's inside the scope and what's outside of it. A simple notion of scope is simply to be explicit about the system boundaries and what data items and data flows are crossing the boundaries from your system to other systems or other entities or organizations. Interface issues, especially with other IT systems with which your system is going to interoperate, are often best resolved at the start of the project. Remember that diagrams can help you. You'll want to get signed approval for these agreed-upon interfaces and place them under configuration control so there is a very visible record of the relationship between your services, processes, and systems that you are developing for your project and the other systems and entities that are outside your project. In this way, these interfaces won't be modified without explicit consideration and approval. In healthcare IT projects, knowing that a particular clinic or unit is in or out of scope is an example. Another example is that certain clinical documents are in scope while others are waiting for a second phase to go live. Be sure to consider how clinicians will accommodate this. Also, healthcare IT projects use vendor solutions or, as they say, off-the-shelf products. Be sure to understand what can be customized and what cannot. This will help you define the scope of your project and elicit requirements. 
If you have pursued these two general techniques for defining scope, that is, taking advantage of existing organizational assets and by engaging stakeholders, you are ready to start drafting and building the project scope statement. This slide shows the outline of a project scope statement and some of its key elements. It will provide the authorizing documents for your project. Like the project charter, it will describe the intended audience and it will provide a general overview of the project. The project scope document also includes the project scope that you have determined from the two techniques that we discussed. Part of the scope statement is certainly the statement of work, and this is a link to the requirements that will be covered in this unit. The statement of work defines the work to be done on the project, the deliverables, assumptions, constraints, system boundaries, and interfaces are all in the project scope statement. This is where you would expect to find diagrams or graphical illustrations that would clarify the work to be done, the relationship between your project and any of the resulting services, processes, and systems, and the relationships to other entities outside your project. Another important element of the project scope statement is the project success criteria. This is based on what your discussions have uncovered as you talked with stakeholders. What are the acceptance criteria for deliverables? What does it mean to be a successful project? How will your deliverables be evaluated and by whom? And certainly, the project scope statement includes references to all supporting documents. This is a key document and should be put under version control. This will ensure that the project scope is not inadvertently changed and that changes are made to it only after an explicit change process. Once you have defined the scope at the start of the project and all of that activity is captured in the project scope statement, the second element is how to manage scope during the project. It often is unnoticed during the project and it's a major cause of late projects when scope isn't managed effectively. We have talked about this as controlling scope creep. One way of controlling scope creep is to get your team engaged in helping you. You must remain diligent throughout your project to ensure your team works only on activities that are defined within the scope statement. Make sure your team really understands the scope of your project so they can be on the lookout for activities and events that may violate the intended and defined project scope. For example, a customer may say, then the system will update the database in real time so the database is current. If in fact that's not what's really going to happen in the system you're building, it's important for you or your team members to speak up and remind the customer that this isn't part of the current requirements. Such a comment could become a de facto requirement if it's not immediately challenged and corrected and the scope is increased in a very innocent way. You have to be clear about what's in scope and how customers and other stakeholders appreciate the importance of all elements of the project remaining within scope. In healthcare IT, clinicians may say things like, at this point, we need an alert to the prescriber that a lab value is out of range or is a panic value. Or they might say, we need to have a drug-to-drug -drug alert pop up at this particular point. These could be examples of scope creep because you may not have those lab values in your system or you may not have drug-to-drug -drug allergy information. Be sure that everyone in your group understands the clearly defined process for managing scope to deal with changes like these. This concludes Lecture A, Managing Project Scope. In summary, we have discussed how to analyze scope and come up with a scope statement, how to elicit stakeholder requirements for the project, and the close tie between scope and requirements.